Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Paris View and I'm gonna be sipping on some green tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, ultramarine blue, raw sienna, uh, chrome yellow, green oxide, Mars black, and fire red. And of course, you can switch up these colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch, oops, a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number six round synthetic brush, and a number zero round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our sky and the base coat for our trees. So I'm gonna be using my large brush to paint, but I'm gonna be using my medium brush to mix some colors. You can certainly mix colors with whatever utensil or tool that you'd like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my sky coming down about two thirds of the way down my canvas and when we get to the painting process I'll show you how that's going to go and then I'm going to be doing a first layer of my trees that the woman is overlooking um, down at the bottom with a nice dark green color. So I'm going to pre-mix myself a couple of different tones and shades of color. So for my sky I'm going to be using a soft blue, white, and a light yellow. So how I got to these um, two colors in through here was I used my ultramarine blue and I added a little bit of white and a touch of black. So what I'm in essence doing is adding gray to my ultramarine blue in order to get it to be this nice, soft, um, gentle kind of blue that I'm gonna be using for my scot. So that's how I got to that color. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can create my second color to show you. So the second color I'm going to go for is a uh, light yellow, which is where my sky is going to kind of transition into. So what I did was I used my raw sienna and I added some white to it. So just take a little bit of white and you can add it right into the raw sienna. This is gonna add some great atmospheric dimension to our sky and, and allow us to still have a lot of dimension with um, all of the other elements that we're gonna be putting in our scenery. So I'm going for that nice soft yellow and then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush again because the next color that I'm gonna premix is a nice dark green for my base color for my trees. So this is the color that I'm going for here. And all I did was I took a tiny bit of black and mixed it in with my green oxide. So I'm just going for a nice forest green type of a color for um, my trees themselves. Then I'm just gonna put my medium brush away. I'm gonna take out my large brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my custom blue color. I'm gonna first mark myself 
um, how far down I want my sky to go, which is going to be about two-thirds of the way. So I visually kind of find my halfway point, which for me is somewhere in through here. Then I find my quarterway point, and then it's going to be somewhere in between those two. So I'm going to go somewhere in through here, and then you can use your brush to kind of measure how far you went on one side, and then just go to the opposing side and just give yourself a little tick mark, just so you have a stopping point for the sky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my custom blue on my brush. I'm going to start at the tippy top. I'm going to be using a left to right type of brush stroke so I can have a nice coverage on there, but I want my sky to look like there's some, you know, soft atmosphere to it. So I don't necessarily need it to be overly smooth. This just kind of gets me started. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this blue down at the bottom. I've left myself a nice soft edge up there. I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom, only down at the bottom I'm not going to have it come up as high. So I just kind of put it down at the bottom a little bit. I'm, I have a little bit too much paint on my brush, so I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm just going to kind of rub this up like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up white paint. So without washing my brush, I'm picking up some white paint. And what's going to happen is this is going to allow me to transition up into that soft yellow without creating a green sky because I know that I had a lot of blue on my brush and the soft yellow that I am going to be using has yellow in it. So blue and yellow makes green. <laughs> so I want to avoid having a super green sky. So what I'm doing is I'm transitioning into a little bit of white to get some of that blue off of my brush before I start picking up my light yellow. So this is pretty good for me now. So now I'm going to pick up that custom light yellow and I'm going to start to transition that up into the top atmosphere of my sky. So again, I'm just looking for this to be nice and soft and have some, some good mood to it. So I'm letting these colors kind of talk to one another and transition into one another. They don't have to um, be independent of one another. So I am just letting you know some of that blue cross over into this soft yellow. I'm letting some of the white intermingle with everything. So again, I'm just using a left to right brush stroke, which allows me to have this softness to it. And I didn't wash my brush, so I still have some of the remnants of the blue in there, which is allowing me to kind of get them to um, overlap and blend in with each other a little bit but without overdoing it and again without making myself a green sky and then if you feel you need to do a little adjusting like I want to put a little bit more white in the center here so I just picked up a bit more white just to get these to overlap a little bit and then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it until I feel like I've got the blend the way that I want and then once I've done that, I'm going to wash and dry my brush to put the base coat of my, um, of my land on. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And then I'm just going to pick up that dark green color. So let me just wash and dry my brush. I'm picking up the dark green that we created. So this is going to take up the majority of the bottom in through here. I, you can really apply it in any type of manner that you want because we're going to be um, putting an entire second coat on it so I'm just using this circular type of brush stroke it's not going to look great it's going to have some scratches in it it's going to have evidence of my brush stroke in it which I'm totally okay with and then when I get up to where I meet the um, the skyline I'm going to kind of overlap that a little bit in order to start the process of the edges of those trees looking nice and soft as they're meeting the skyline. So this is about where I'd start doing it. And you can make them go uneven, so I'm just going to kind of um, turn my brush in a circular manner. My paint is still wet, which is exactly what I've, I've planned for, so you don't have to worry about it intermingling with that paint. That's the whole point of it, so it can have a nice, soft, believable edge to it and I'm just bringing this all the way across in through here. And if you do end up with a firm kind of horizon line at this point, don't worry about it because we've got lots of stuff that's gonna help to rectify that. And then I'm, once I've got this done, I am going to, uh, let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use our small brush 
or for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the Eiffel Tower and the city around it. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown. I will also be using my um, light yellow color, maybe a little bit of white and a little bit of black. Um, I do wanna recommend that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using a series of vertical lines and little crisscross diagonal lines for the tower, for the city. I'm going to just be making a real impressionistic style um, city. It's really far off in the distance, so I'm just going to be making a whole bunch of dashes and rectangles and squares and it'll be a, a real fun process that I'll show you how to do but we're gonna start with the tower first I'm gonna have again my tower is gonna be way off in the distance so it's gonna be really really tiny so what I'm gonna do is find myself about halfway on my horizon line so this is about halfway in the middle of my canvas and then I'm gonna go over to the right of that maybe about an inch inch and a half and I'm gonna make myself a mark with brown paint. So I just uh, loaded my brush with brown paint. Just gonna give myself a little vertical line like that. And then I'm gonna go about a half of an inch to the right, make myself another little mark, and about a half of an inch to the left, make myself another little mark. I'm gonna go up from this center mark about two and a half inches. So you do wanna make sure that you have it at equal distance away from the edge of your canvas. So you can use anything as a measuring tool. You could even use another brush. You could use the brush that's in your hand, but you wanna make sure where the mark that you make above is the same distance from the edge of your canvas as this one is. So for me, it's about six inches. Um, and I can use my brush as a measuring tool and then go up. I'm gonna go up about two and a half inches. So for me, my next marker is gonna be right about here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this mark to this mark with just a real slender um, vertical line. So I'm not pressing my brush hard and I use my hand as a brace on my canvas and I'm just gonna kind of give myself a nice vertical line like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this top to these bottom two pieces. So this is gonna be a long, gradual type of line with a slight curve. So I'm gonna start up at the tippy top. The tippy top should be nice and pointy, so you don't wanna disconnect that line right away. So I'm gonna start up at the top and then just start to slowly disconnect it like this. And then as I come down, I'm watching my line down here to make sure that I don't pull it out too, too far, and then I'm just gonna kind of connect it in through there. And then I'm gonna try and do something similar on the other side. So again, just kind of bringing this down at a slight arc, and then bringing it down to this bottom line in through here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up from this bottom, I would say about, um, maybe about a, a half of an inch or so, and I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a mark and then I'm gonna give myself a tiny bit of a diagonal line to the left and bring it out past the edge of my um, exterior wall, something like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up about another half of an inch to an inch. You shouldn't be more than halfway up the, the tower. So if this is about halfway up the tower, you're gonna drop it a little bit below that and you're gonna do the same thing by making a couple of um, slightly diagonal lines like that. And then I'm gonna go all the way up to the tippy top and maybe about a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch away from the top and just give myself another little marker. These are just indicating the, the different layers of the, of the tower. Then down at the bottom, I'm gonna give myself a couple of arcing lines from here to here. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side from here to here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decorate it with a, with a bunch of um, little X's. So what I do is I'm gonna just kind of lightly kind of take my, my brush and do a whole bunch of um, faint kind of X's throughout these upper portion of the, um, 
of the tower. You can also do it in this little portion in through here. I'm hardly touching my canvas. I want this to be a real subtle kind of effect. I want you to have the illusion of kind of seeing through these marks to um, see the other side. This is all a bunch of iron type of work on the tower that um, allows you to see through and see the sky through it and all that good stuff. So that's going to help with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up um, a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, just an itty bitty 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 bit. And I'm using a small brush, so this helps to um, make sure that I don't have too much paint on my brush. I'm going to give myself a couple of little darker areas to just set off a little bit of dimension. So underneath these um, levels. I'm putting a tiny bit of black paint in through here like this and then maybe even a touch down at the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start picking up my light yellow that we created for the sky. So a little bit of just washing and drying my brush picking up a little tiny bit of light yellow and I'm just going to add bits of highlights all over the place. So I'm going to just maybe put little little highlights at the top of some of these areas, maybe just coming down the side. I'm really just kind of tapping my brush every now and again. I don't need to do any, just make sure that you don't have too much paint on your brush. <laughs> I just had a whole bunch of paint on my brush. Just little tiny bits of lines to give the impression that maybe some of these areas are sparkling from the from whatever the, the light source is in the atmosphere. And then once I've got that done, that's looking pretty good to me. I can see some details on my on my tower now and you just keep fiddling with it until you make sure that you have as much detail on there as you want and then once you do I'm gonna start loading in some buildings so I didn't wash my brush I just have that light color on my brush right now and I'm gonna bring my buildings probably if this is the center of my canvas in through here I'm gonna go maybe about a half of an inch to an inch to the left of that that'll be the the width of it and then over to the right I would say I'm maybe about three inches from the edge of my canvas somewhere in through here. So that's about the barrier of the city that I'm going to do. And really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make myself some vertical and horizontal lines at different lengths, different heights. Maybe I've got a couple down in through here in front or next to the... Um, next to the tower itself. Maybe I've got some in through here. Right now I'm just using the light color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a bit of brown and black. So this is going to give me maybe a couple of windows. Maybe we've got the, the dark side of a building in through here. And I just, when I'm doing these quick um, impressionistic kind of cities or cities that are way off in the distance. I'm really just looking to give the illusion that there is in fact f shape or form to these buildings with some are different heights than others. Some have, you know, different construction to them. You know, some sit in front of others. So don't feel like you have to make yours exactly as mine because mine is not exactly as the city, the actual city itself. I'm really just trying to give the illusion of it with maybe some some windows, maybe, you know, the, the top of a building here. Maybe we've got a smaller, pointier building over here. I do know that in um, Paris, they don't have a, a lot of tall buildings so I wouldn't make too many tall skyscrapers. I, I know that they, they do have a few taller buildings but nothing. Um, I think the tower, the Eiffel Tower might be, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Eiffel Tower is the tallest building in that city. Um, and whatever happens down at the bottom of these you can always, when we go to do the tree line, you can um, kind of disguise the bottom. I just picked up a little bit of white paint so I can add a couple little sparkle bright spots through in my throughout my city as well and then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it if you wanted to pick up some of your um, sky blue you could do that as well um, but I'm thinking that this looks pretty good so I'm going to call it at this point my next step is going to be done with my big brush so once you've got your beautiful little Paris city all nice and done you can walk or put your small brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish 
our trees in through here. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm going to use are white, green oxide, chrome yellow, um, maybe some of that dark green, and maybe a little bit of black. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. But what I'm in essence going to be doing is I'm going to be making the treetops, the illusion of the treetops. I want them to be lighter and softer as they're close to the city. And I want them to be a little bit darker and more in focus as they come down towards the bottom of the canvas or closer to our um, window or balcony. So up in through here, I'm going to be using white, a tiny bit of white, a tiny bit of yellow, and a little bit of my green oxide. So these three, and you can even kind of, you know, blend it a little bit if you wanted to, but I like having multiple colors on my brush at the same time because it provides me with that uh, ability to get different colors on the fly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of lightly tap it up towards the top in through here. I want those edges to be really nice and soft. I'm going to put a tiny bit more uh, white paint on my brush to just give the illusion of the, uh, you know, maybe these are a little bit darker, uh, maybe some coming over in through here, getting a little bit lighter. I don't have much paint on my brush at all. I'm really just looking to give myself this soft illusion of these treetops. So just a tiny bit of paint on my brush and you can keep playing with the intensity. Like I just picked up a touch more white paint on my brush just to switch up the tonal value a little bit or the color value on it. And because I'm not using a lot of paint, you're able to see some of that underlying color. Maybe this time I pick up a little bit more of my green oxide. So it shifts to being a little bit darker as we go over in through here, a little bit different tone of that, of that green. As I come over to this left side, I know that my woman is going to be taking up a lot of this area, so I'm not going to pay too much attention to it. I just really kind of want to get some color on there. Again, she's going to be taking up the majority of that area, so I don't need to make it too detailed. And then as I come down into the, the rest of the canvas, I'm going to be using more of my green oxide and maybe a little bit of my dark green, but what I'm really just looking to do is give the illusion of the tree tops. So I'm using white as well, and maybe a little bit of my green oxide right now. So white and green oxide, and I didn't wash my brush. So as I come down my canvas, all these colors will really um, speak to each other and allow for the um, the illusion of the treetop. So I'm going to give some some big curved areas. I'm going to leave some darkness in through there. So again, I'm using my green oxide right now just to kind of give myself the the thought of some treetops in through here. I'm so I'm as I'm dotting. I'm dot using a stippling dotting type of technique, and I'm giving I'm doing it kind of in a curved type of manner to give myself that that thought process. I am going to pick up a little bit of my dark green right now just so I can make sure I've got in between some of these um, looking to be on the darker side so it gives good depth within the um, within this type of forest that we're or park whatever she's looking down upon so that those dark areas really are important to provide that illusion um, that we've kind of seen in between some of these trees again this side over here not terribly concerned so I'm picking up green oxide and my dark green over in through here just so I make sure that I have a good coverage but I'm not I don't need to do any detail over here other than make sure that I kind of carry these colors cover colors in case there's a little sliver over here that is um, on the opposite side of her body. So it will look like it all ties together. As I get in through here, I am going to put some darkness down at the bottom. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint without washing my brush. And this is going to give me some even darker spots as the um, as it comes down towards the bottom of the canvas. Now I'm picking up some green oxide without washing my brush and this is going to give me the additional kind of in focus treetops. So as you get closer to the viewer 
the more contrast that you create, that's going to, which means going from the dark value to the light value, that's going to make it look more in focus. So as you're, or, and or making that object appear to be bigger. So that'll make it look like we're really kind of looking down and these are closer to us. I'm gonna put, um, that's looking pretty good. I feel like I've got some good kind of treetops in through there. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush right now because I want a little bit more um, information on these closer trees and I don't wanna muddle it too much or blend it too much. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my green oxide yellow and a, and a bit of white and a very tiny bit on my brush, so little that I'm even kind of tapping it off on my on my um, paper towel. And then I can just kind of put these little bits of speckles on top of these trees just to give them a little bit of dimension but without going too, too much. And then I would just kind of let it dry and fiddle with it a little bit. Remember, we've got lots of other details and information that are gonna be going in front of this. So as you're working your way through the detailed process of it, just know that this is, some of it is just kind of background noise. We're gonna have all of those curtains and the balcony and stuff is gonna be in front of a lot of this. So you don't really need to go super detailed with it. Really, we're just kind of working to give the impression that this is a beautiful kind of forest that sits below the balcony that she's looking out from. And then once you've got it done, we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our woman and our railing. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before this step too, because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers, and by the time we're done, we'll have something that is a nice, simple outline for us to color in during the painting process. So I'm gonna start with my railing, or at least the top side of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down from my horizon line about an inch, inch and a half on this left-hand side, make myself a mark. Then I can use my brush or some kind of anything as a measuring tool to see how far down or up I made that marker. Oh, mine's nice and exactly the same as this brush at where the shiny part meets the black part. And then I'm gonna go over on the other side and make myself a mark at about the same height, somewhere in through there. And you can make subsequent marks throughout the, um, the throughout the way. So you have kind of a point of reference to hit along the way, because I'm just gonna make myself a, um, a continuous line to connect these dots. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just something that's gonna bring you across that canvas. That's gonna be the railing, which will give us a couple of points of reference for some other stuff that we're gonna do right now. So the next marker that I'm gonna make is down in this bottom left-hand corner. I'm gonna just give myself a little bit of a diagonal marker in through there. And then I'm gonna give myself another marker a little bit to the right of my halfway point at the bottom. So if I eyeball my halfway point, which is about somewhere in through here, I'm gonna go a little bit to the right of that, give myself another marker somewhere in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of split the difference of these two, so somewhere about here, and I'm gonna go straight up and about an um, inch and a half to two inches above my um, railing mark, so somewhere in through here. This is, in essence, gonna be um, kind of about the height of her waist in through here. I'm gonna connect here to down here. This is gonna, in essence, kind of be her, her hips, and whatever the um, movement of her dress that I want to be. So I'm gonna take this from here, I'm gonna start over on this left-hand side, I'm gonna bring it in this curved manner over in through here where I kind of cross over my line in through here, and then I'm just gonna kind of bring it out and kick it out down at the bottom. This will be kind of the splay of her dress down at the bottom. And over on this side, I'm gonna have this coming out a little bit almost to where my, my buildings are. So I'm gonna have it coming somewhere in, in this direction, in through here, 
that looks pretty good to me and then as I come down in through here this can be a, a nice wavy line it doesn't have to be anything um, you know straight or distinct but if you can give it a little bit of wave that's going to give that dress a little bit of movement so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from from this area in through here and give myself a torso so I'm going to come about halfway between my um, my railing and the top of my canvas so that's going to be somewhere in this vicinity in through here I'm going to go directly up from here and give myself a marker so this is in essence going to be the top of like her shoulder area I'm going to come to the right of this just a little bit I'm going to curve it so you can I think I need a pencil so you can see what I'm doing through this dark area so I curved it a little bit in through here this is um, not as far out as I have her her hip in through here so it's somewhere in this vicinity this was the the where we started I'm about an inch to the right of that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw myself a diagonal line to represent her the top of her shoulders but I want her to look like she's kind of leaning a little bit so I'm gonna have it a little bit diagonal what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way over to the left as high as I have this here I'm gonna go over to the left I'm going to come in from that, I would say about an inch, and then drop it about a half of an inch to an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these with a diagonal line, and I'm going to curve this one over here. So let me just give that a little bit more pencil so you guys can see it a little bit better. So something like that. Then what I'm going to do is on this back side here, this is going to be her left arm, and we're going to see the exterior side of it and her elbow. So I'm going to come up from my railing about an inch, right about in through here, and then this is going to become her elbow in through here. So I'm going to take this and just kind of curve it up like this, and then I'm going to meet it in through here. And again, doesn't have to be a perfect line. Sometimes it makes it look a little bit more natural if you have a little bit of wiggle in it. This right hand side is going to end up being her shoulder, her breast and then part of her arm is going to be coming down on the um, on the railing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of give her um, a continuation from her hip that's going to make up like the side of her belly her breast and then go up into her shoulder so somewhere in through here I don't want to go all the way to the edge I'm going to come in through here I'm going to give her just the side of her stomach a little bit of her chest and then up there for her shoulder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, from about what would be right about her waist area, somewhere in through here, I'm going to bring out what will be just a little bit of her, her wrist. We just need some kind of structure that's going to be underneath her um, shawl or her um, scarf that she's going to have around her arm, so something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her head on. Her head, she's going to have long hair, so I'm going to do just an oval type of shape for her, um, for her head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and it's going to be a little bit to the right of her shoulder. So again, or from the center of her shoulder. So this is going to give me again, a little bit of perspective as to her posture. So if I go from the middle of these shoulders and go straight up, I'm going to stop maybe about three inches from the top of my canvas. So that'll be the tippy top of her head. But when I go to do my oval shape, I'm going to weight it heavier on this right hand side. And it's going to um, come, here, let me use my pencil again so you can see this. This is where it's going to end up on the right hand side. That's where her hair is going to end up. And then on the left hand side, somewhere in through here. So here we go. I'm going to take from this top and I'll do the left hand side first. I'm going to curve it like this and then back in for her hair. And then same thing over on this right hand side. So I'm going to take it out. I don't necessarily want it to go as far out as her shoulder, maybe just shy of the distance of her shoulder, and then bring it back in. And then that's all I'm going to do for her. What I'm going to do for my railing is I'm just going to make myself a couple of decorative marks that I can follow um, for the painting process. So this is going to be about the center of my um, canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a vertical um, a line going down the center 
I'm going to cut the difference or go about halfway between here and here, give myself another vertical line in through here. These don't have to be perfect. They're just kind of guiding you through a decorative uh, way. And then you can make any kind of um, decorations that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of um, make something that is uh, pleasing to my eye, but you can certainly have fun and make it whatever way you want. When I'm doing like these decorative um, types of things, I like to just try and keep it symmetrical. So I started halfway in here. I can start halfway in here and then just give myself something uh, similar that's over on this side and you don't have to make them perfect but something that is pleasing to your eye I'm just thinking this is a beautiful like wrought iron kind of um, decorative railing you can make yours into whatever you want I think I'm gonna just make sure that I have this to mimic over on this side and then over here would just be maybe this curve right here so from here I would just kind of make it like let's see if this is here just make sure I don't lose myself here there we go just a little curve down in through here and then maybe the essence of one of these little curves in through here and then you can make any little tweaks and adjustments that you want we're going to use our large and our medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat for our railing and our woman. I'm going to be using my large brush and my medium brush, and I'm going to be using black paint only. So what I'm going to first do, I'm using my large brush first. I'm going to be painting in my woman with black paint. So I don't need to do anything fancy. All I'm really going to do is color in a base coat right up to my chalk marks. You might find that you want to use a different size brush for this. Whatever works for you is totally fine. Black is usually very um, well covering, so you can certainly use any kind of brush stroke, but I'm doing her first, so that way if there are areas that I feel I want to use my my medium brush for, which I know I'm going to be using when I go to do the um, railing, I can certainly save those areas. So it's just kind of a little expedited way um, to get the majority of her painted in. When I go up to the head, I am going to, when I um, go around the uh, sides of the head, I'm going to just be mindful that I don't go too much farther than my chalk mark. I am going to be putting on little strands of hair and stuff like that that are going to come away from uh, this outline, but right now just want to make sure that I don't extend that head too much um, by accident. So I'd rather keep it a little bit small when I'm doing this solid color um, and expand it later with the little um, pieces of hair that I'm going to be putting around the side than to accidentally make it too big <laughs> with this solid color. You can always expand it more when you go through the um, through the painting process of giving the little um, movement to the hair and stuff like that. And then I'm just kind of bringing this around. And again, if you felt that you wanted to use your uh, medium brush to get these edges nice and clean, that's totally fine. But we are going to be doing another step where on her clothing and uh, on her um, hair and all that good stuff where you could utilize the second step to um, clean up any edges if you wanted to. Sometimes these bristle brushes, the, uh, the little bristles on the ends have a mind of their own, so they don't necessarily always give you the cleanest line. But again, that's totally fine for me because I know, I know what the process is and that we've got lots of other stuff to go. So I'm okay with it being imperfect at this point. And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna use my medium brush for her arm because I know that this bristle brush is just too big for me to do that little sliver on her arm. So I'm putting my large brush away. I'm taking out my medium brush and this is where I'm gonna just kind of uh, put her little arm on in through here. She's gonna have, um, again, her shawl and stuff that is gonna be covering the majority of this, but I'm just giving a little sliver of um, see-through area in through there. And then I'm just coloring my, um, my railing with black. So I'm just gonna utilize my chalk marks to guide me through this process. And you 
you know, may want to have a different color for your for your railing. Maybe you want yours to be a wood railing with just um, vertical kind of uh, decorations on it or framework to it. So feel free to make this into whatever you want. Yours does not have to be a, a Paris or a French scene. Yours can be, you know, maybe she's looking out to the ocean and you do, you know, a different type of balcony that's got you know, a, a much different feel or look to it, but you can certainly utilize this um, this construction process that I'm going through to guide you into decision making. If you want to um, make any kind of different elements in it, you can utilize this process on how to build it. You know, there's lots of different um, uh, um, aesthetic type of variations for for these beautiful balcony railings so you just feel free to make yours into whatever whatever you'd like and then once i've got this done i am going to be um let's see what are we going to do for the next step we're actually going to use the same brush for the next step so this is where you could you know modify your decorations all you want to make them into any any special um style that you want if you need to adjust the the ch where the chalk mark was, you can certainly leave part of that chalk mark if if needed. Let's say you're going through this process and you're like, oh, uh, that that's a little in the wrong direction. Just leave the chalk mark, paint it, paint the correction in, and then once the paint dries, you can come back and um, erase that chalk with a little bit of water. Well, chalk is very forgiving when it comes to being able to um, get rid of it. You just do it with a little bit of water and it takes takes it right out of the equation for you. And then just bringing this down here. I do have a um, kind of a shaky hand. So you'll notice a lot of times I'm resting my arm on my on my easel so that way it keeps my brush nice and straight and you can also use a little bit of fluid on your brush as well to get these nice clean lines but we're going to be doing highlights and shadows on this in a minute so that will take care of any um, edges that might not be perfect and then once you've got this done do any little fiddling tweaks that you want and then we're going to be using the same brush for the next step so you can wash it dry it and get ready All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the railing. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my sky colors. So I'm going to be using my light blue that we created and that light yellow that we created. And if I need to use any white, I certainly will. So again, you can make this railing into whatever you'd like, but I am thinking that it's a nice shiny like wrought iron decorative fence or um, railing that would have a lot of reflections on it. So what I'm using for my highlights is the colors of the stuff around it. This is one gonna complement the color palette and the color scheme on the painting, but it's also gonna make these, um, ele these this railing look shiny because it's, it's uh, carrying the colors of stuff around it. So I'm gonna start with some of my sky blue and I am envisioning my light source to be over on the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put highlights on the top of my railing as well as kind of streak it on the right hand side of the various pieces. So I've got this um, sky blue on my, on my brush and this is a time where you get to kind of clean up any, any edges if you feel that, the, um, that they need to be a little bit straighter or wider or whatever you feel adjustments need to be made, you can certainly do that. I'm gonna put a little bit over on this side as well. And if you bump into her dress like I just did, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then as I go through this highlighting process, I don't wanna color over all of this black cause that in essence is the shadowy kind of area to it. So I'm just really gonna be care in a carefree manner kind of streaking this sky blue on the right hand side of some of these pieces. And I don't have to do it on all of them because some of them might be casting a shadow on on their neighbor. It you know it's it's intended to look like metal so it could have some various shiny work that you know I don't know the whole makeup of it. There could be something else that 
could be um, deterring it one area from being illuminated so it doesn't have to be um, technically perfect. We're going to be putting another bit of a highlight on it in a second um, in a in a brighter tone. So this is really just kind of setting the stage of the form of these um, pieces of the railing. And again, I'm just kind of envisioning where this, where the light would hit it if the light was over in that direction. So it may, you know, hit it a little bit differently if there's something in, in, in its way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm picking up some of my light yellow from the sky. And this is going to give me a little bump up of the, um, make it a little bit brighter. So I don't need to do this on the entire, um, uh, entire way. Again, I just want it to look like there's these little shiny spots here and there. So as I do this, I'm thinking don't overdo it. Just kind of give yourself these little pockets of this extra bright tone in here. It One, it's going to make it pop out from Oops, that was a little, my brush got away from me. I'm, good thing I'm putting a curtain in front of this area. Um, it'll l allow this railing to pop out from the, um, from the dark forest that it's sitting in front of. So this helps to um, add to that, that contrast and give you that extra vibrancy in it so you can see it better. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your railing done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our woman's body. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black and white. And what I'm in essence gonna do is strategically place some highlights which are gonna give her body form. This is going to allow her shoulder to pop out, allow her arm to look as a separate piece, allow her back to have some shape to it. We're gonna put a little bit of um, volume in her rear end, maybe a little bit on her front, and then give some um, kind of ripples in her fabric. And I'm gonna do this all with just black and white. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm imagining her to be wearing a black dress, so I just have to put these strategic highlights in order to make all of this happen. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a dark gray, so that way I don't accidentally go too light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a teeny bit of white paint and then just mix it in with my black. So this way I can control myself because sometimes I like to, a lot of times I like to use multiple colors on my brush at the same time, but this one I want to have a little bit more control and I don't want to overdo it. So I've mixed myself a nice dark gray color and I'm going to utilize this to start the process for me. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to give her a back. So I know that right in through here is where her, her waist or her butt is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of pull this out to the left-hand side and give her a little bit of an arc in her back. So that's gonna set that. I also know that I never wanna have a firm um, interior line. The exterior lines where it's on the outside of her body can be nice and clean, but when you're doing a, a gradient or you want it to look like it's fading in, you don't want that interior line to be firm. So I'm going to wa wipe my brush off and then what I do is I'm going to just rub this gray into the black that's next to it. So this is going to allow me to have that gradual um, fade into the darker area and I don't I won't really struggle with um, creating those blends. So that starts that process off. I'm going to do the same thing for her arm. So her arm is kind of back like this and like this. I know her elbow of this arm should be similar to where the point of this one is. So I'm gonna come about the middle of her head, where I see the middle of her head, come straight down and at about the same height as this elbow here, that's where I'm gonna place the elbow of this arm. 
the back side of the arm is going to be in, in through here. So I'm going to put my highlight on the arm, the center part of the arm itself in through here. And then I'm going to just kind of let it come into the the elbow in through there. I'm doing this um, gently at first. I will add more information in a minute, but right now I just kind of want to get the the idea of where all of these these parts are and um, without overdoing it. I have a little stray bristle on my canvas that's driving me crazy right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna scrub it off, there we go. <laughs> um, but this is gonna be her shoulder in through here. So I just have the remnants on my brush of that dark gray and letting it form into that, that arm that I want. This is obviously her chest in through here, but I need to um, give her a little bit of lightness in order for it to show differently than the arm. So I just put a little bit of that gray on my brush and I'm giving a little bit of um, lighter area in through there. This is her forearm. So all these areas that I'm adding a little bit of this gray color to it are going to pop out a little bit more. So they are going to be closer to the viewer. This is just the underside of her arm, so I don't really need to do much to that. I think I want to pull this front part of this arm out just a little bit, her bicep, just to make sure that it's not too slender, and then maybe just bring this back part out just a little bit. So that way I feel like it's the same as the other arm. And then I would just kind of um, fiddle with that. I might drop it a little bit too, just making sure that I've got good form on it. I don't want it to look too skinny. That that works a little bit better for me. And this is the beautiful thing about the black background. This is a great way to kind of get your feet wet at doing um, this contouring for highlights and shadows because black can easily help you to correct things. So I want her hips and her rear end to kind of pop out. So I've got quite a bit of that gray on my brush and I'm just going to kind of um, dictate where I want the area to pop out to the viewer most, which is in her rear end. And then what I'm going to do is I will start to pull it down. Right now I'm just dry brushing it into the neighboring um, gray or the neighboring black. Now I'm picking up a little bit more of my gray to give myself maybe a little bit of highlights over on this right hand side because we already spoke of the light source being over on the right. So I'm um, speaking to that right now. And then down at the bottom of this dress, I want a little bit of movement. So I'm gonna just kind of give myself these um, lighter uh, streaks of sorts. I will get them to blend in with the black in a second here, but just kind of giving myself some direction for that um, for the skirt. I just picked up a little bit of black on my dirty brush right now so I can start to blend these ripples of the dress into that black so I have some nice transitions from the light area of the ripple into the dark area and then just making sure everything else around here blends in pretty well. I feel like I want a little bit lighter in some of these areas especially on this right hand side so I'm going to use my gray and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white in it so I can get one more lighter version of my gray. You could in essence have used that darker gray plus a touch of white on your brush, but I just opted to make a little bit lighter of a version and I wanna put it up here on this shoulder. This is gonna make the shoulder pop out just a little bit more than the forearm or than the um, bicep area. So again, just playing with these uh, values of these colors will allow you to get certain areas to pop out a little bit more than others. So we got the arm in place, but if I want that shoulder to come out a little bit further, I've got to add a bit more brightness to it. Or if I wanted to recede, I would need to put more black in it. But right now, just kind of getting a little bit more lightness in some of these areas just to get them to have a little bit more volume in them. And then I just kind of let it dry, keep playing with it. I know she's going to have some beautiful hair that's going to kind of steal the show away from her body and that she's got a, a wonderful red 
um, kind of scarf that's going to be draped over her arm and stuff so I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot this is almost a less is more kind of step but you can certainly you know feel free to keep tweaking this as much as you need to I feel like I just want to make sure that I have a good coverage back on this arm over here and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash I think her arm needs a little a little correction here you can wash and dry this um, medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our woman's hair. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, white, some of my raw sienna, and maybe a touch of red too. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm going to be putting uh, little stray hairs in place with a touch of black and brown on my brush. So I'm picking up some black and some brown. And what I'm going to do is I have a little bit on the end of my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of bring out some stray hairs along the edges. So by doing this, what I'm doing is I'm taking out the unnatural clean edges of the, um, of the outline that we did and providing these couple of just more natural, transparent or see-through type of spots throughout the edges of the um, of the hair and it makes it look a lot more natural than just having a straight edge to it so again black and brown is where I'm starting with this and this is also a time where you can pull out like the shape of her head so if you want to have some um, almost like longer top part to her hair like her bangs or something you can certainly kind of pull this out along the edge and again brown and black around my brush so I'm not doing it too heavy I don't need to um, do it a, a solid black color the whole idea here is to leave some of that transparency so it looks like we're seeing through the hair and that we've got some um, some movement to it and that we've you know we can uh, have that dimensional element to it. I'm going to pull some down, maybe um, kind of streaming in the front of her as well, maybe just kind of um, resting on her chest or kind of just um, cascading down in through there. So again, just black and brown. I'm going to add a little bit more lightness to this in a little bit to have it have a little bit more color to it, but this is just kind of getting the, setting the stage for me allowing me to understand the flow of how I want it now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe my brush off I'm picking up brown paint and this is where I'm going to really start to put the movement of the hair in place so I'm choosing to do um, brown hair you could certainly choose to do whatever color you want um, but through through this process I like to use the black as the as the base so that way um, I can have some great dimension to it. You can, when you start using the brown, start to go outside of your footprint of that original outline a little bit. That again will help you to have a little bit of um, that glow from the hair, I guess. Maybe I've got a little bit coming out over in through here and because I don't have um, hardly any black still on my brush, you get to see more true that color of the brown just kind of showing um, along those edges. I'm going to bring this down the back. When I get to where her, the top of her back is, I'm going to give my, my hair a little bit of a curve, like it's kind of resting over her back in this um, manner. That makes her look like she's a little bit more leaning in towards the view that she's looking at. And again, right now I'm just using some brown paint on my brush and this is just setting the stage for how I want this hair to flow. I've got it coming. She's gonna have some long hair. This is gonna kind of come over her shoulder, something like this. So I'm just kind of pulling it as if it's laying on top of that, that shoulder and her back. You don't need to bring it straight down. Um, I love to put movement in my hair and I like that movement to be a lot of times dictated 
by the movement of the body or of whatever it's laying on top of. So I've got it with a little bit of wave down at the bottom. I'm bringing mine about down to her elbows, um, but you could certainly bring yours further or yours could be more curly. Whatever you'd like is totally fine. And then once I've got it laid out pretty much where I want it to go, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding some strategic little highlights. So this, the highlight, whatever you choose for it to be, can be more on the um, lighter side or darker side, wherever your visual preference is for the hair color is totally fine. Um, if you want it to look more blonde, you just use more lighter tones with your white. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start using my brown plus some of my raw sienna. So this will be a nice kind of golden highlight to the hair. And I'm gonna just start building it towards the light. So I want maybe a couple of um, nice pieces kind of coming over in this direction. And I never do too much when it comes to the, the highlights when it comes to um, if I want the hair to look nice and just long and gentle and soft, I'm not gonna do too much with the highlights. I don't want to overpower it. And if you just build your way gently towards the light um, using you know one shade or two shades lighter at a time and just build your way towards the lighter areas, that's gonna make it look the most natural. I am gonna, um, I think, switch up my color a little bit. I think I want some maybe a little um, more rusty type of tone to it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a touch of red into some of my uh, raw sienna so I get more of like a little bit of a rusty or orangey kind of look to some of this hair. You don't have to, again, do this if you don't want to, but this just, again, is gonna add a little bit different um, tones to it. You can even use some of your sky um, highlight if you wanted to use that, that's totally fine. So I've got a little bit of my um, raw sienna plus a touch of red in it and maybe a little bit of white and you can see it's got this beautiful glow to it as soon as I did that um, and I'm gonna bring some little pieces out to the side something maybe we'll put a little bit of highlight in through here yeah I like that color <laughs> that's sometimes you just got to find the right color that speaks to you and that that color did it for me that's making it look like it's really just kind of catching the light adding a little bit of you know brightness to it a little bit making it show the movement of it a little bit more and again i'm not overdoing it when it comes to these highlights and i'm just progressively working my way towards where i'm going to want the lightest part to be and my highlight or my light source is over on the right so that's why i'm adding a bit more brightness over on this side of the head. The head is round, so I'm curving these top pieces as if they're going around that head. So something like this, and that helps to speak to the shape of the head, something like that. Maybe we've got a couple little pieces in through here just so we can see it as it's cascading down the back. Maybe a tiny bit of this uh, rusty color over on this side so we can see just that little bit of highlight. Now I'm just not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a touch of my light yellow from the sky and add a couple of bright little pieces, maybe on this shoulder, just kind of accentuating those bits that I've already kind of put into place, giving that movement in through here, and then maybe a little bit right on the top of this head in through here giving myself this extra bit of um, brightness to show that it is being illuminated definitely more on this right side by something than it is on the left side. So that just helps to steer the viewer into understanding what's going on and then you can just kind of keep fiddling with it. If you need to add more brown or some of your more golden color, feel free to do so. Keep tweaking your little strands that are kind of carefree and just um, falling down alongside of her or maybe in front of her. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you just kind of keep fiddling with your hair with those highlights and then you can if I can ever stop. I like painting hair. <laughs> I'm gonna put a couple extra little highlights back in through here. So I just picked up some of my brown and some of that um, rusty color. 
And then I'll use this same brush for the next step. So I will wash it and dry it. And if I can ever stop painting hair and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the windows. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, black. I'll be using my light yellow from my sky and I might use a little bit more raw sienna and or white too, but if I do, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first build the window frame with brown paint and a series of markers that I'm gonna connect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my brush with some brown paint. What I'm gonna do on the um, top right hand side of my canvas, so I'm gonna come in about, I would say maybe about two, two and a half inches, and I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a marker. Then what I do to ease my straight line drawing process is I'm going to measure how far that is, and then I'm gonna come down and make myself a series of more markers at about that same distance, so that way, I have an easier time going down and connecting the dots, <laughs> in essence, as I'm doing this. If you have an, a ruler, great. You can just follow your ruler, um, but if you um, are just kind of going for it, like I am, making these series of dots helps you to just kind of go straight down and connect the dots. So this, this is what I'm doing. I just have brown paint on my brush right now, and I like to keep my eye on the prize, which is the preceding dot, and that helps to just guide my brush into it. I may not always be straight, and I'm okay with that because I'm putting a big, huge curtain in front of it, but I, this will definitely help me to at least start the process. I'm, I reloaded my brush. I want this line to be a little bit thicker, so just kind of reloading my brush and using a good amount of paint at this point just so I can have a nice solid frame for um, for my window. You can have yours thicker or thinner. This is your window. You can design it however you'd like to. I think my other paint is dry at this point so I don't have to fear running my hand through wet paint. And sometimes when you just go faster, it you know that helps you to, believe it or not, make straighter lines too because you're not thinking about it as hard. You already got the line in place and sometimes you can just kind of go back and forth, up and down it, and that sometimes just helps you to clean up lines without you know thinking about it too, too hard. And then once you've got it on here, or you just keep wiggling it some more and then it'll just keep going <laughs> bigger and bigger on you. But again, we've got a great curtain that's gonna come and save the day for us. So I'm gonna do it on this side and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side over here. But this one, I'm just going about a half of an inch away from the edge of my canvas. So I don't even have to worry about marking it off. I'm just going to watch the edge of my canvas as my um, as my guide and I'm just going to kind of go straight down like this. And if you come to a point where you're in front or behind your girl or your woman, you just make a decision if you want her to be uh, posing in front or behind of the window. So I'm probably going to opt for the window to be on the other side of her. So I'll just go work around that elbow if I have to. And then the framework is definitely inside the, um, the railing. So I just make sure that I come on this side of it and then her, her dress is gonna be a little bit in front there. And then if you have to do any you know fixes or tweaks after it, this is all done, once you get it in place, that's totally fine. I mean, you've got plenty of opportunity or time to make you know any little fixes on it that you want um, another little trick to doing straighter lines is to try and keep the same type of pressure on your brush especially if you're using a round brush like i am i can kind of put the paint on there and just push it push my brush into the canvas at the same pressure and that sometimes will help you to get a more consistent um, line down uh, those sides. And then once you've got that on there, I'll have to put her her arm back in front of the, that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the um, opposing like slats to it, or the horizontal ones. So this, you can really put them wherever you want. I'm gonna strategically place mine so I don't obstruct the view of my, um, 
of all the details. So I'm going to come up above this, um, my landscape a little bit somewhere in through here. Just give myself a horizontal line. And again, just kind of pushing my brush nice and firm to get that. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do one down in through here as well. So somewhere down towards the bottom of my canvas. And these, you know, again, architectural pieces can be whatever you imagine them to be. I'm gonna put two more up in through here. Maybe this one's gonna be maybe a couple inches away from the top of my canvas like this. And then I'll do one more. I guess this one I can do maybe about in between these two somewhere in through here. So the trick now is whatever you did on this right hand side to do the same thing on the left hand side. So this is where your fancy measuring tools come into place. <laughs> so I would measure how far down I did this one. Then I come to this side and do one at about the same height somewhere in through there. I measure my second one that goes almost down to the end of my brush. Let me just remeasure that to make sure I've got it somewhere in through there about right in through here. And you, of course, could pull out a real ruler. That's totally fine. I know that this one, it, my railing is uh, even right now, so I can just use my railing as a measuring tool. And then this one's just about an inch or so away from the bottom of my canvas. So now that I've got that done, I'm just gonna add some quick highlights and shadows. I'm picking up some black paint on my dirty brush. You don't have to wash your brush. The light source is over there, so I'm putting a shadow on the left and the bottom of each one of these. So I just picked up some black paint. I'm gonna go down this left-hand side of this um, piece of framework, so something like this. And I like to use a little bit of moisture on my brush, especially when doing these long kind of continuous lines. So right now I have black plus a touch of water on my brush. That helps me to kind of get the, that continual line going. And then I'm just going to do the bottom like this. And I am not doing a fancy window here. Again, this is going to be hidden by a curtain. So you, you know, have fun with making it into whatever you want it to be. Whatever style you want is totally fine. But just know you've got you've got the liberty to kind of do it in whatever way that you want because of that curtain that's gonna be going in front of it. So again, just black. I'm going on the left-hand side in through here. So all the way down this left-hand side, trying to keep myself um, a little bit of room so you can still see the, uh, the world to the left of this uh, piece of framework. And again, doing these additional lines like we're doing right now can also help to clean up um, any, any wobbliness or help to aid in um, making it a little bit more straight. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do, oh, I put, I put the frame all the way in front of there. I'm gonna have to make a little correction there. And then I'm just gonna do a little bottom line in through here. And then I'm gonna do a highlight on the opposing side. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna use my sky color plus a little bit of um, raw sienna. So I've got sky color and raw sienna. This is just gonna give me another tonal value. So it looks like it's maybe just wood with a highlight on it. So um, I'm just doing it on the top side in through here. I think I want a little bit more of the raw sienna. So it's a little bit more on the yellowy side. So something like that. And of course you can make yours into whatever color you want. And it will also help this stand out from in front of the sky. So that way it, uh, you can see the difference between the two of them. And then just down in through here. And then I need to do it on the right hand side of this pole as or of this framework as well. Oops, I just see that there's blue on my brush. So I have to wipe that off. And then down this right hand side. And I'm gonna keep it inside the frame like that. Uh, you could totally put it outside the, um, you can make this 
in a, you know, whatever way that you want. You could put it on top of the brown or outside of the brown. So if you put it outside of the brown, you're going to see, I'm trying to avoid wet paint right now with my hand. You're going to see that color a little bit better because it's on a lighter background. But um, if you don't want to run the risk of it being transparent and seeing some of that background behind it, you can just put it right on the brown and that'll that'll do just fine and you can see as i'm coming down here you the framework is really popping out nice and neat so i'm going to go ahead and do that same thing on the left hand side just going to give myself this highlight down i mean on the left hand side of my canvas but the right hand side of the framework just giving myself this nice light highlight and again i'm using the raw sienna plus the light yellow from the sky so something like this skipping her arm i know i'm going to go back and give a little correction in through there. See if I can adjust my body here so I can get all the way down here. And then just a little um, highlight on the top of these uh, bars in through here. And then we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your windows done, make any little fiddling, adjusting that you uh, need and you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the scarf. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red and black. And if I need to use anything else, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do, I really just want this to look nice and long and flowy and definitely disguise that she doesn't have a hand right now. <laughs> but I put this wrist in place just so we had some good form. And so when we go to add the fabric, we will have a great place to kind of build it off of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some red paint on my brush and I'm gonna um, put the scarf in place. I'm gonna have it kind of coming over this arm and draping down in through here. It's gonna be uh, hanging down her the, the crook of her back or, or in front of her rear end a little bit and then it's going to go up into this um, elbow area and come out the other side. So what I'm going to first do is give myself um, kind of an outline of sorts. So I'm going to come down this elbow a little bit, maybe somewhere in through here, and I'm going to be connecting that to over here. So I'm going to come up the arc of her back I would say maybe about a good inch or so, somewhere in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a big sag in through here. But I want it to look like gravity's taking over, so I'm definitely gonna have it kind of coming down in a straight fashion, um, somewhere like this. I want this to kind of come right in front of this little corner too, so something like that, and then just maybe get it to connect in through here, so something like that. It'll be the top part of it. And then I'm gonna come up her arm, I would say maybe about another inch or so, or half of an inch to an inch, something like this. And this is gonna be the bottom side in through here. And it's gonna come, I would say, almost halfway between like her, um, where her hip is here and here. So maybe somewhere in through here. And this is gonna be a big sag down in through here. So I'm gonna come, I would say, maybe uh, I would say maybe about three inches down from here so right about here would would work somewhere in through here you could of course have yours longer or shorter it's totally up to you and then I want it to look pretty natural so I'm going to have gravity taking over coming down in through here I'm going to have it sagging down in through here so once I've got that there I can just sit here with the red paint in this um, area. This is going underneath her arm like this. And then I'm gonna bring this down again, kind of in a stripey fashion. So it looks like the gravity's taken over. This is under her arm as well. So just kind of making sure I bring it all the way to her back and then just kind of pulling it down. Red is awesome because it is transparent or translucent, which is why I chose it for this painting i thought it would look fabulous on top of the black that she's wearing so i'm just utilizing it um, in this curving type of way to give myself the appearance 
of um, kind of folds and ripples in that fabric. So I'll work on this a little bit more in a second, but I want to put the uh, other pieces in place. So if this is going over her arm, it's going to come out the bottom side or over in this direction down and through here. And I want this to just kind of be long and flowy. So I'm just going to kind of bring it almost down to the to the edge of the canvas, giving it uh, just some wave to it. And I'll have it kind of coming out um, on the other side of her body in through here. So again, I'm just using the um, using my brush in a wave type of way to get um, this uh, the, the movement in it. I'm telling myself that gravity take is taking over, so it will be coming in a downward motion, but maybe the wind is taking it a little bit, and maybe there's a little bit of ripple in it, so something like that. And again, we'll add a little bit of dimension to it in a minute, but that's looking pretty good on that side. And then over on the right-hand side, I want this to look like it's coming out at her elbow, so somewhere in through here, and I'm gonna have it kind of laying down her arm, so I want there to be a curve to it so it looks like it is laying over her arm like this. So I brought it just past where this one was, somewhere in through here, um, and then on her wrist, I want it to kind of like buckle up like it's kind of gathered a little bit. So I'm gonna bring my line from here, it's gonna come down over the top side of her arm and then maybe like bump up a little bit. Like again, like there's some ripple to it and it's gathered a bit and definitely want it to look clumpy so it can hide that arm a bit. And I'm gonna put a little bit of um, additional colors in this area as well so we can make sure that we've got the, the shape that we want but we've hidden the things that we want to hide. So something like that. And then I'm gonna bring this down in a real nice wavy kind of way. I'll bring this down towards her hip and maybe it'll kind of come out and then back in and cross over her dress a little bit. And then I'll have this side maybe follow a pretty similar kind of wave to it. So we've got it coming over and then something like that. And of course it doesn't have to follow it exactly. You can have it look whatever way that you want. And then once I've got the shape on there, now I'm gonna just color it in with a striping type of um, brush stroke, always in the direction that I feel that that fabric is going. So that way the um, the transparency of the paint will make it look like that fabric has movement to it because the thicker the paint is in certain areas, the more it will um, be vibrant or red and the thinner it is, the more it's gonna look transparent and see the colors underneath. So now that we've got it in place, now I just wanna add some strategic kind of highlights and shadows. So the shadows, I'm gonna just pick up a tiny bit of black paint with red on my brush. And this is just gonna give me little bits of, um, I, I'm gonna call them shadows, but it's more just kind of telling us the direction of the fabric. So I'm gonna put this in areas that I feel that the fabric would bunch up a bit. So maybe as it's coming down this arm in through here or also in front of something so that way it shows the movement of the fabric a little bit better. I'm gonna make sure that I have a little bit back in through here so we can have again over the spots that are, are pretty transparent so it looks like that fabric is uh, taking on its own shadows and stuff as well. Maybe a little bit in this area too. And you just kind of feel where you want those dark spots and light spots. Again, this is a transparent type of fabric, so it is okay that you see stuff underneath it, but if you wanted to have more drama and more depth to it, these shadows help out. So I'm gonna put some on this front part as well, down in through here. I've got black and red on my brush. Again, I'm using this to kind of disguise her arm too, um, so that way I can build this and not fear that um, you can't see the hand that's not there. So this is a great way to just kind of work on those type of skill sets. And then I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because I wanna add some brightness to the red and I wanna get that black off. So I can build my highlights on red with red because <laughs> it is the bright, the thicker it is, the brighter it will appear. So I can just kind of keep building 
strategic highlights. Like I feel like I really want a bit more in through here. So I just kind of keep adding my red until it's either not see-through or it's as bright as I want. So I've got some good stuff in through there. And then definitely I want a bunch up in through here to make sure that that looks like it's the closest to our highlight. And if you needed to or wanted to, you could certainly add a bit of um, yellow or white to amp up the brighter areas that you want. So feel free to play with that if you need to. And then we're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some curtains. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my sky blue, my sky light yellow, and a touch of black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just making these delicate sheer curtains. I'm looking to have it not look like it's windy, so they're just gonna be laying nice and flat. And I'm really just looking to add some extra bit of dimension to my painting, so this type of element can really help with that process. So I'm gonna use my large brush. I'm gonna start with my sky blue plus water on my brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush and dip it in my water. I'm gonna pat it on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up a teeny tiny bit of my blue. Like I don't need a lot at all. So just a little tiny bit of my blue. What I'm gonna do is I'm having my curtain start, I would say maybe about another inch or so to the left of my um, window, something like that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my color a little bit heavier at the top and then I'm going to be streaking it down. So if you feel you have a lot of paint on your brush it's always better to start with less paint and add more later. So just kind of tap it on your paper towel until you feel like you don't have a lot on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be pulling down this sheer blue color. So this is going to go in front of my window it's gonna give it a lot of dimension. I feel like I wanna put a, pick up a little bit more blue, so I picked up a little bit more on my brush. I want it to be a little bit heavier up at the top, so I just picked up a little bit more so we can get the full effect of it. Again, it's always easier to add more than it is to take it away. So I'm just kind of utilizing this, and it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of something on there that's gonna give the illusion that there's an, a pretty curtain that's just hanging in front of the of the window this is a great time again to kind of disguise things like if you're if your um if your window wasn't perfect you can always put a little bit of that curtain in front of it you know just utilize that to help you out i'm going to do the same thing over on this left hand side so about an inch to the right of my window so uh something like that. I just felt like I had too much paint on my brush, so I wiped it off a little bit, and then I'm gonna come straight down. She's in or behind the curtain, so when I get to her shoulder, I just stop, and if I bump into it like I just did, I can fix it in a minute, but I'm just kind of bringing that straight down, bringing a little bit in front of the window, just bringing it in a straight fashion, and then this just kind of hides behind her, her dress in through there if I feel I want a little bit in through there I can pop that in now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint like just an itty bitty bit with a bit of water on my brush again similar to how I did the blue and I'm just going to give myself a little bit more dimension in this a little bit darker maybe at the top and on the edge this is again just a little faint detail that is going to make it look like it's kind of um, rippling a little bit again hardly any paint on my brush something like that works for me that's good maybe a little bit over on this side I've got a little bit of a light a glare from the light in my room so I'm not sure if I'm doing it exactly the way that I want it but this is working out and now I'm gonna add a bit of that the light yellow from the sky so I am washing and drying my brush and I'm gonna do the same process where I add a tiny bit of water plus my um, sky yellow and just a itty bitty bit I don't need a lot and this again is just going to be an added 
little dimension to it. You don't need a lot, just a teeny tiny bit, maybe a little bit up at the top to give you that sheer appearance to it. A little bit over here maybe. And again, I'm just creating an illusion here. I'm not looking to paint uh, you know, a, a, whole, a whole bunch of detail in this. I'm really just looking to provide this soft appearance of what would be a sheer style of curtain. And then you just sit and you tweak it and you make any little modifications that you want. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, I would recommend you wait for it to dry for a minute and then make any little modifications that you want. Get out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom right on this one. I'm using my small brush and I'm gonna use black paint. So I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful woman looking out at a spectacular city, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.